Hey everybody, shalom. Welcome to Made New Radio. Well, this is actually not a live, it is a video. And I wanted to kind of do this message as a podcast, but I don't know, the Lord just like really led me to just do this on camera. So I'm hoping that's not going to be a lot of camera stuff because I don't, I'm not somebody who likes to get ready a lot, but I want to make myself presentable to the Lord. So I had to get ready and yeah. But anyways, let's go ahead and pray. Father God, I praise you and thank you, Lord. I thank you, Father God, for this message that you are about to give to um, a certain group, Father God, a certain group that you have have just put upon my heart, Father God. And I just ask you, Lord, that your Holy Spirit will take over and that only your words come out of my mouth in the name above every other name, my Lord Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen and amen. All right. So I've been wanting to do a video like this for a while but I forgot about it. And then, yeah, so last, uh, I think I want to say last night, was it last night? So I was watching some videos. I was kind of looking at some Christian single sermons and there were a few things that struck out to me and I felt like I should make a video. I prayed about it and you know, the Lord's like, yes, you know, gave me the green light to do it. So here it is. So I'm going to be talking about to not let anybody take your crown and this message is for us single people. Now one of the things that I found as I was watching some videos were that a lot of these videos were made by people who are married or they're courting. Is that even a thing now courting? It should be but you know in the world I guess they date or whatever. They like I'm not even from the world <laughs> but anyways so um, yeah they either court they're dating or you know, like I said, they're engaged or married. And I can say that from a single's perspective, because I have been single for a very, 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 very long time. Okay. Um, I am 40 years old. I have no problem saying my age. So, you know, I have gone through a few things, a, a few different emotions concerning my singleness and being a Christian. So I was looking at these videos and I'm like, you know, for me, I always felt like, okay, you're married, you're there already, you know, I don't want to hear you. <laughs> That's how I, you know, used to perceive it. And I feel like there can be a frustration, especially if you are in a waiting season or, you know, you just came out of serious relationship and you are not interested in, you know, trying that again. <laughs> so I wrote down a few things. I have my notes here because I have a tendency to ramble, as you can tell. So there are a few things I want to talk about today concerning singleness. And you'll see why at the end, why I titled it, Don't Let Anybody Take Your Crown. Okay, so we're going to read from Ruth chapter 2. We're going to read a little bit out of it. And it says, Now Naomi had a relative on her husband's side, a man of standing from the clan of Emilic. Emilikit, sorry, I'm a teacher, I should know how to pronounce things right, <laughs> whose name was Boaz. And Ruth the Moabite said to Naomi, let me go to the fields and pick up the leftover grain behind anyone in whose eyes I find favor. Naomi said to her, go ahead, my daughter. So she went out, entered a field, and began to glean behind the harvesters. As it turned out, she was working in a field belonging to Boaz, who was from the clan of Elimelech. Elimelech. I'm going to try it. Sorry. Just then Boaz arrived from Bethlehem and greeted the harvesters. The Lord be with you. I'm going to read that again. Just then Boaz arrived from Bethlehem and greeted the harvesters. The Lord be with you. So one thing that struck out to me was that, you know, Boaz and Ruth were both doing their own thing. Okay. They weren't sitting around waiting. I believe Boaz was older than Ruth. And, you know, she was doing her own thing. You know, she was like, okay, I got to go and I got to go to the field and, you know, provide for us, provide for me and my mother-in-law. And Boaz, you know, he was already, you know, established. He had a field. He was already established in what he was doing. I think a lot of the times we Christians, you know, we're, we just want to sit and wait and, you know, and feel like, well, until the one comes, I won't be 
content or I'm going to be whole. No, you, if you're like, if you're thinking like that, when it happens, then you're not going to, and it doesn't happen the way you think, like this fairy tale, you know, romance, and, you know, you end up not being content. You know, don't wonder why. You can only find your contentment in Christ. He is that missing thing that you have been longing for. And if you're not a Christian, it could, you know, this is new. You know, this is, you know, a new thing for you to hear. But I want to encourage you, do your own thing, you know, get your career going, you know, get that degree, whatever it is, do your own thing, establish yourself in wherever the Lord leads you, because the Lord is the one who's going to bring you that ultimate contentment. He is the only one that can fill that void in us. So don't wait for somebody else to do it. If you're single, trust me, you're hearing from somebody who is single and has been single for a long time. Don't wait for somebody to bring that to you because it's not going to happen and you're just going to get frustrated and, you know, you're just going to not want to just deal with anything at all. So save yourself the frustration. Amen. So we're going to go ahead and go to Ruth 3, 7. And the reason why I want to read that part is because I noticed that um, in that, that Boaz was content in his life. So in 3, 7, it says try not to move my table here. And when Boaz had finished eating and drinking and was in good spirits, he went over to lie down at the far end of the grain pile. Okay, it says he was in good spirits, obviously, because, you know, he was partying it up. That's what I'm just kidding. But, um, you know, he was in good spirits. He was content. He was established in his field. Be content where you're at. Be content in your singleness. And yes, I get it. It's frustrating. You're probably like, well, I've been waiting for years. The Lord promised me. The Lord promised me this and that. But how can you tell me to be content? Because if you're just going to be frustrated all the time, um, you're not going to really attract anybody at all. Just saying. So be content where you are. Be content in where God has you. Right now, the Lord has something for you, you to do. He's not waiting for you to get hooked up with somebody. There is something that God wants for you to do, but the enemy is clouding your mind so much with this whole, you know, wanting to take it to the next level in your life that you're missing it. Don't miss out on the blessing. Amen. So another one I wanted to read was Ruth 314. And let me go ahead and get to that. All right, so, so she lay at his feet until morning, but got up before anyone could be recognized. And he said, no one must know that a woman came to the threshing floor. What struck out to me, if I'm looking down, I'm looking at my notes, by the way, was that he wanted to protect her, okay? Women of God, sisters in Christ. When he is a godly man, he is going to want to protect you. He's going to want to protect your character. And he's going to want to protect your integrity. Brothers in Christ. When she is a woman of God, she's going to want to protect you, your character, and your integrity as well. They will not want to pull you away from God. If they're pulling you away from the Lord and you feel like you're you're going further and further away from him then maybe you need to you need to break it off i'm going to be i'm going to be straight up like that okay <laughs> you you will need to break it off because so you're going to be with somebody who's going to pull you away from god and you know some of you are not going to want to hear that because you know you're so in love and all this stuff but i encourage you please in all seriousness pray <laughs> if that's happening to you Pray, please, please, please pray and just really let God speak to your heart on that, please. All right, so another area, because I know the story of Ruth and Boaz, that's something that a lot of, you hear a lot of sermons, you know, find your Boaz, forget the bozo and get your Boaz, you know, it's the same sermon all the time, honestly, you know, I don't know how many I, I have heard in my lifetime, but 
I want to go to Ruth, um, to, yeah, to Esther, not Ruth. We were already there. So we're going to go to Esther. And there was a few things. I still use my table of contents. Do you? <laughs> Probably not. But um, let me go ahead and find Esther on here. Doo -doo -doo. Um, where's Esther at? Okay, 266. So there was uh, quite a few things that stuck out to me in Esther. Okay, so like in chapter 1, we see that Vashti, you know, she gets called by the king. The king calls her. And she's like, not going. I have too much kingly things to do. You know? <laughs> you know, she doesn't go. And he gets very angry. And what happened to her? If you know the story of Esther, you know, boom, she got kicked out. She got replaced. She got replaced by Esther. So I'm going to go ahead and read 217, chapter 2, verse 17. Now the king was attracted to Esther more than to any of the other women, and she won his favor and approval more than any of the other virgins. So he set a royal crown on her head and made her queen instead of Va Vashti. Okay, so Vashti's disobedience, what did it do? It made her lose her royal position and her blessing. You know, she was blessed to be there, blessed to be the queen, right? But she lost her crown, you know, due to her disobedience. She was disobedient to the king. Don't lose your crown. Don't let anybody steal your crown. When we are disobedient and we want to do things our own way and we want to be like a Sarah, you know, we all know the story of Sarah. You know, she gets um, Haggai, Haggai, you know, sleeps with Abraham, has the baby that she thought was the promised one, right? The promised child that was promised to her by God. Instead of waiting on God's timing, waiting on the Lord, she took matters into her own hands. And we know, you know, she was, she was not happy afterwards. You know, and then a lot of other things happened, right, in between there. Don't let anybody take your blessing do not let anybody remove you from your royal position Vashti's disobedience made her lose her crown her blessing and her royal position and that was given to Esther so know your worth know your worth you are awesome you are amazing brother and sister in Christ whoever is watching this Please know that you are amazing and you are loved and you are not alone. There is nothing wrong with you. There is absolutely nothing wrong with you. God is just working on you, refining you through the flame, refining you, making you whole again, making you new again so that when your Boaz arise, arrives or when your Ruth arrives, they will know who you are and you will be ready for them. You will be ready and whole and you too will do things for the kingdom of God that God had ordained for just you two to do. So there's nothing wrong with you. I just really feel in my spirit to say that right now. There's nothing wrong with you, okay? Nothing. You're not ugly. There's, you know, there's nothing wrong with you. Don't let the world, don't let the world tell you anything with that, like that. Which brings me, okay, so I'm actually going to go to my next, my next set of notes right here, which ties into what I was telling you guys. So when bring you know, coming to the, to the topic of, you know, people asking you questions. So when are you going to get married? You know, wow, you're already 37. Okay. So when's the marriage? When's the kids, you know, they ask you all these questions and, you know, to be honest, it can be annoying, right? <laughs> you know, you don't want to answer that. You're just like, none of your business. I'm just kidding. But um, who do you listen to, though? I'm going to tell you a little story, okay, as I s try to find First John. So 
I remember one time I was a substitute teacher and there was another coworker who asked me, you know, oh, you're single. Yeah. And I'm like, yeah. And she was like, you know, so you don't want a boyfriend. And oh my gosh, that irritates me. I'm sorry. That irritates me so much when they say that. So you don't want a boyfriend. You know, what are you waiting for? Like, what? Why, why are you asking? That's such a like, oh my gosh, that's such a like pet peeve of mine. Okay. Anyways, um, you know, she asked me that and I was just like, I didn't know what to say because I always get caught off guard when they tell me those things. So I was just like, um, you know, well, I'm just waiting for God. You know, that's what I told her. And she's like, well, you know, you got to help yourself. You know, why don't you go to the clubs and, you know, the bars and, you know, try to meet somebody. I'm sorry, what was that again? She, her advice, her worldly advice was to go to the bars and clubs. So who do you listen to? What advice are you listening to? Are you listening to the world or are you listening to godly advice? Let's see what the word of God has to say. So we're going to go to 1 John 4, 5, okay? And you're going to notice There's a lot of things that I notice. um, Sorry, the train's going by. You're going to get to hear the train. I live near train tracks, so whatever. All right, so first, John, let me go ahead and read what I had wrote in my notes. I, I wrote, the world says to take charge. You know, the world is like Sarah. It tells you to take charge, right? But what does the Word of God say? On first John four five they are from the world and therefore speak from the viewpoint of the world and the world listens to them okay they're speaking from a worldly viewpoint is what they're doing so that obviously is not going to gain you anything it's not going to be helpful if anything it's going to just damage you more so we have to follow we can't follow what the world says you know if you do don't be surprised when things mess up You know, don't be like, what? How did that happen? You know, don't be like that. Because if you follow worldly advice, if you're following the world, the way the world thinks um, singles should be, you know, you're going to be in for a lot of heartbreak. Okay? So we should always be seeking God. Okay? Seek the kingdom of God first and everything will be added to you. Like it says in Matthew 6.33. Seek the kingdom of God first. Seek him Fall in love with him. He was, some of us need to go back to our first love. And that's Jesus Christ. We need to go back to our first love. And I want to encourage you, if you are single, even I don't care if you've been single for 20 years, I don't care if you've been single for the last two days. Fall in love with Jesus. Fall in love with him. Seek his kingdom first. To ask him, what, Lord, what do you want me to do for you? What is it that you will have me to do for your glory and your kingdom's cause? And he will tell you. Get so filled up with him that you're not going to even be worried about, you know, not being married. And I know it's hard. I know you're looking at everybody within your age group. And they're moving up to the next level. You know, they're getting on with life. And you feel kind of stuck. You know, I went through a period where, you know, I was like, oh, no, I'm cool. I'm cool with where I'm at. And then there would be those times where I'm like, I'm not cool where I'm at. Lord, what are you doing? (laughs) But I saw this really cool thing on Instagram. It was a picture. And it said, you don't have to chase what is God sent. Okay, think about that. You don't have to chase what is God sent. You don't have to chase it. You're not going to have to chase it. You're not going to have to beg the person. You're not going to have to try to do what you used to do in the world to get somebody because that's not going to work, okay? If they are a man or woman of God, it's not going to work. Allow the Lord to make you whole again, people. And when you get in his holy presence, there's one thing I really wanted to say was that you need to test the spirits. You know, a lot of the times we think we hear from God. A lot of the times we think it's, you know, the Holy Spirit. But I I just really feel that we need to test the spirits. Let's let's see what it says in 
1 John 4, Dear friends, do not believe every spirit, but test the spirits to see whether they are from God, because many false prophets have gone out into the world. This is how you can recognize the spirit of God. Every spirit that acknowledges that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is from God. But every spirit that does not acknowledge Jesus is not from God. Okay, so I have a little story to tell on that as well. I was watching a Kay Nash video and she was talking about testing spirits. And so one day I was driving home from work. It was like a 30 minute drive, you know, from my former job to where I lived. And, you know, I was praying, I was praying in the spirit and all of a sudden, you know, I heard something, you know, say something to me. And at first, at first I thought it was the Holy Spirit. Okay. And because it sounded so like clear, you know, and I was like, wow. But then there was something inside of me that was like, mm, I don't know. There was something weird because I had just watched that sermon like, what, a day ago. So I said, I go, I'm going to test the spirit. I'm going to test it. And I said, do you believe Jesus Christ came in the flesh? And it said, no. It said it just like that. No. Like that was an ugly voice. And I was like, oh, I rebuke you. Get out of my prayer in the name of Jesus Christ. You have no business here in this area. Get out in the name of Jesus. I rebuke them. Bind that thing. And I remember that I was like, whoa. A afterwards, I was like, wow. Now I know what it's saying there in 1 John 4. <laughs> you know, so test the spirits. And, you know, and that's not for everything. Obviously, you know, it can be the Holy Spirit at times. You know, it can be something the Holy Spirit did tell you. But, you know, just make sure that you do test the spirits and that it is from the Lord God. Amen. So we're going to end today with Revelation 3, 4. Okay. I'm sorry, 3, 11. And it says, if I can find it, 3, 11, where you at? Okay. I am coming soon. Hold on to what you have so that no one will take your crown. Hold on to what you guys have so that no one will take your crown. You are awesome. You are amazing. Look, you may have had a lot of heartbreak in the past. I don't know your story. But God does. And God saw everything. He saw every tear. He saw every deception that was placed in front of you from the enemy. But don't get mad. Don't get mad about that. The past is in the past. Work on now. Fall in love with Jesus. And get so filled up in God. That you're going to be content no matter what. Whether God calls you to a life of singleness. Or whether God has you waiting for your Ruth or your Boaz. Don't let anybody take your crown. I love you guys, and I'll see you guys on our next video. I go live, like, Monday through. I'm trying to do Monday through Friday, but probably will be less since I started teaching, okay? All right, well, I love you guys, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye and shalom.